Getting a credit limit increase with Chase can be a frustratingly difficult task, and it can result in a damaging hard credit pull depending on how you make the request. In this video, we'll compare manual versus automatic limit increases, and then I'll show you why applying for a completely new Chase card is the best strategy for increasing your credit limit. First up is the manual limit increase. This is where you reach out to Chase to ask for a higher limit. Based on data points from other Chase card holders, your account will need to be open for at least six months before you're eligible for a manual increase. Also, Chase is known to have a maximum credit limit they can extend to you. Usually that limit is half of your yearly income. So if your income is $50,000, then Chase may be resistant to offering you more than $25,000 in credit across all of your Chase cards. There's no way to ask for an increase on the Chase website or within the Chase app. You have to actually call customer service and apply over the phone. I think this is a strong indicator from Chase that manual annual limit increases are not very welcome. We'll discuss what Chase actually prefers in a bit. I called customer service to see what information they asked for. To my surprise, they only ask you three questions. What these questions ultimately reveal is that these are the most important pieces of information that Chase needs to know about us other than our credit report to render a decision. If this was a three question exam, then each question would be worth a whopping 33%. So you wanna get this right. The first question is, what is your income? This is a very open-ended question. There are so many income sources you can include. Your personal income can include part-time and full-time jobs, investments, retirement income, public assistance, and if you're over 21, it can even include income from other people that you share money and responsibilities with. In that case, you would just use your household income. It's important to state your highest income potential because a higher income tells Chase you're more capable of paying off larger credit card balances. The next question is, what is your housing costs. Here, you just state your rent or mortgage payment or what your portion of that is. So if your rent payment is $3,000, but you have two roommates, then you can say that your actual rent payment is $1,000. These two questions will be used to calculate your debt to income ratio, which will give Chase even more information about how much credit you can afford to pay off. Ideally, you want your income to be as high as possible and your debt, like housing costs, to be as low as possible. The last question is what is your employment status. I would just keep it simple and choose employed no matter what. A standard W-2 job is going to be seen as more stable than being self-employed in most situations. Did you notice that they never asked for how much of an increase I wanted? That's because Chase will fully determine what your limit should be. Many other banks will ask you for your desired credit limit and you'll have a real chance of getting it. Chase does not offer you that luxury. So something to be aware of is anytime you manually request a credit limit increase with Chase, it will trigger a hard credit pull, which shows up on your credit report and damages your score by a few points. So you need to give some real thought about whether you want to take the hit just to increase your limit. If not, I have some even better options for you. A great option that has been working for a lot of people is being patient and waiting for Chase to initiate a automatic credit limit increase. This has a couple of benefits. It only triggers a soft credit pull, so your credit score is not impacted in any way. Chase cardholders are saying that they They've received an increase as quickly as four months. That's a full two months before you would be eligible for a manual limit increase. To improve your chances of this happening, you want to give Chase a nudge in the right direction by increasing your usage on the card. I try using 75% or more of the card's available credit limit and paying the statement balance. I'm even seeing users having success using upwards of 90% of their limit. This tells Chase that you need a higher limit to meet your monthly spending needs. If you're worried about the high high usage on your card negatively affecting your score, you should know that your credit utilization rate has an elastic effect on your credit score. As soon as you decide to pay off the card and a zero balance is reported to the credit agencies, your credit score will snap back to its original level in one to two months. Changes in the amount of credit I use has been responsible for most of the swings in my credit score over the years, and it's always been temporary. If you have less of a stomach for changes to your credit score, you could also try paying some of the balance off before the statement closing date to limit the amount reported to the credit agencies. That should allow you to up your usage and maintain your excellent credit score simultaneously. And if you're getting value from this, please like and subscribe so you can see more videos just like this one. The absolute best strategy for increasing your credit limit on a Chase card is signing up for a completely new one. You'll just need to make sure you're still under Chase's infamous 524 rule. The 524 rule says that you can't be approved for a Chase card if you apply for five 
five or more cards within the past 24 months. Most people prefer to have multiple chase cards anyway, so that all of their chase ultimate rewards points can be pulled together and used for travel purchases. If you already have the Freedom Unlimited and you apply for the Freedom Flex, then you'll most likely get a similar credit limit to your existing credit line. The Sapphire Preferred, on the other hand, has a starting limit of $5,000 and the Sapphire Reserve starts at $10,000. Any of these options would significantly increase your overall credit limit with Chase. And here's where the real genius of this strategy comes into play. Chase lets you reallocate your limits between cards, which means you can move a portion of any card's limit to another card of your choosing. This means you can take excess credit from the new card you just signed up for and transfer it to your desired Chase card. This method does trigger a hard credit pool, but you're getting so much more than just a slight limit increase. You get a completely new card with new bonus categories and benefits, a lucrative signup bonus, the ability to combine rewards between cards, and a potentially massive limit increase to top it off. If you'd like to learn more about the best strategies to use to increase your credit limit on popular cards, then check out this playlist I made just for you next. Thank you for watching and you have a good one.